We welcome you to this broadcast of boys varsity basketball on NK Telco Sports. We are at Bakken's Athletic Complex where the Newton Indians will take on the Bakken's Trojans. Tonight's game is brought to you by the following sponsors. Keyhole Pizza, First National Bank, Precision Strip, Emerson Climate Technologies, Carriage Works, Grand Lake Health, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Lincoln Electric Automation, two minutes, two Minster minutes. Bank, New Knoxville Supply, Pratt Industries, Winners Meats, and NK Telco. Thank you to those fine sponsors. My name is Jeff Henschen, bringing you tonight's matchup between the Newton Indians out of the Western Ohio Athletic Conference and the home team tonight, the Bakken's Trojans, representing the Shelby County Athletic League. The Newton Indians enter tonight's game with a 9-9 mark overall. They are 5-4 in their conference play. 9-9 overall. Bakken's comes in 10-7 overall, 6-4 in their conference play. And again, 10 and 7 overall. So these teams have just a couple games left before they will hit the postseason. And right now, these teams are pretty balanced as far as record goes. And we'll score off here at the Coliseum. The Newton Indians are coached by Gavin Spittler in his sixth season. He's had some additional years at the program and also some other coaching experience, a total of about 14 years coaching for Coach Spittler and for Bakken Coach Phil Groves in his second season, also has spent some other years coaching here in the system. Those are your head coaches as we get ready now for our national anthem. We'll come back then with our starting lineups and our keys of the game here at NK Telco Sports. been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. At Wilson Health, we're extending care beyond the walls of the hospital with resources designed to keep you in charge of your health. Our independence and connection to the community are unique in a world where big health care strives to act like corporations. Our tools may be the same, but we are different. We're neighbors, friends, and family who truly care about the people who live here. We call it caring without limits, and it's just the beginning of a whole new Wilson Health. Welcome back to Bakken's as we get ready to meet the starting lineups here. First, they will introduce the officials, which are Clay Ehrman, Steve Trout, and Mitch Owen. Clay Ehrman, Steve Trout, Mitch Owen, and now the starting lineups for Coach Gavin Spittler's Newton Indians. Beginning with visitors from Newton High School. They are number one, Quinn Peters. Number one is Quinn Peters. He's a junior, averaging 13 points a game. Number two, Hudson Montgomery. Number two is Hudson Montgomery, a senior, averaging eight points a game. Number three, Carson Tucker. Number three is Carson Tucker, a junior, averaging just under two and a half. Number 33, Harold Auburn. Number 33, Harold Oburn. 
a senior averaging just under 20. And number 50 is Max Newhouse, sophomore averaging just over three points a game. They average 48 points a game. And now for the home team tonight, the Vakians Trojans. Started for Mikins, number one, Colin Dosek, a 5'8 sophomore, averaging five points a game. Number two is Ryland Paul, 5'10 junior, averaging six points a game. Number 21, Grant Berger, a 6'2 senior, averaging just under four points. Number 24, Jordan Herzog, a 6'4 junior, averaging seven and a half a game. Number zero is Carter Plyman, a 6'5 senior, averaging just under 19 points a game. Trojans are coached by Phil Groves in the second season, assisted by Dennis McFerrin, Mitch Gubo, Keith Geyer, and William Wisher. Those are our Emerson Climate Technologies starting lineups. And I would also now like to go to our keys of the game, brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. For Newton, they like to control the tempo. They need to rebound the basketball. And Coach Splitter said, take care of the basketball. For Botkins, they want one and done on the defensive end. Adjust to the varying defenses Newton expects to play against them. And also control the tempo. So both coaches want to keep it in their tempo. As we're set as the leading scores for each team. Score off to jump center, Plyman and Oburn. Both those guys right around 20 points a game as the game's first shot is a three-point basket by Colin Dosek. A good start for the Trojans. His 18th make of the season from that distance, and this is Oburn right here. He's about 40 points short of 1,000 in his career. And he's being guarded right now by Carter Plyman, who is about 70 points short of a 1,000 in their scoring career. Oburn, well defended by the Trojans. He comes up short on his shot. Another three-point shot. This one taken by number two, Ryland Paul, off the mark. And the Indians will come back after the quick shot by the Trojans, and I'm pretty sure the timing got out of rhythm there as Hudson Montgomery didn't connect well with number one, Quinn Peters. Unfortunately, though, for the Indians, it's just a dead ball turnover, so they will go back and score up now against the Trojans. Almost catching Plyman off guard was Peters almost able to get the steal, but Plyman recovers. Zone defense for the Indians. Three-point shot by Colin Dosa. He is now two for two. Made the 18th, the first trip, the 19th there. In transition, Peters misses the attempt. Plyman weaves and gets into the basket. An 8-0 start here as Coach Splitner will take a timeout. Splitner will burn one with 6.23 to go in a quarter. You're watching boys basketball on NK Telco Sports. CarriageWorks has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. CarriageWorks thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top-of-the-line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. 
There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. Ohio means jobs all Glaze County has a job for you. Grand Lake Health System has over 800 employees. Included is Joint Township District Memorial Hospital and multiple physician practices. And we're now hiring a variety of positions that fit all education and skill levels. Plus, you'll get a great benefit package offered to both full and part-time workers. Join this rewarding career and help your community in the process. Contact Ohio Means Jobs Auglaize County for all your employment needs. Welcome back to Bakken's. We are in a precision strip timeout called by Gavin Splitter, the Indians head coach. As the Trojans have jumped out here to an 8 0 lead, just 6 23, or still 6 23 left to go in a quarter. So, in a minute and a half, a nice start for Bakken's, a long way to go. And Coach Splitter hopes to get his team squared up here on offense. They've had a couple of looks at the bucket by their leading scorer. Oburn and also Peters, both those guys have come up empty in the scoring column and back to offense they go, facing a man-to-man -man defense by the Trojans. Right now guarding Peters is Ryland Paul, almost face guarding him as he has strictly assigned to number one, Quinn Peters. And they're gonna force someone else to do the scoring. This is Oburn who will shoot a three, that's off the mark. Another one and done for the Indians. And on the other end, it's shot by Ryland Paul, no good. Oburn with the rebound. Here come the Indians looking for the first points. This is Peters from the elbow. Again, right on the mark, just a bit short. Climbing with the rebound. It's been one and done for the Indians. Left-handed three-point shot by Brant Berger. The third triple of the game already for the Trojans. The 19th of the season for Brant Berger. An 11-0 start. This is Oburn, Harold Oburn with the basketball. Quinn Peters now will try to work against the Bakken zone defense of Dosek, but Peters that time able to get a shot off and the first points of the game. Actually, that was Montgomery. Sorry, Montgomery with the basket. A turnover for... The Trojans and instant offense as Peters does now get his first point of the game on the layup and 4-0 after 11-0 start by the Trojans. Four unanswered. Another stop here by the Indians is going to help them as they climb back from a, what was 11th down to 7. Plyman being guarded by Oburn. Baseline Herzog will give it back to Plyman. Thought about the three, penetrates, kicks out. Good ball movement as Berger will not get his second one to drop. Carson Tucker bounces over to Montgomery. This is Harold Oburn looking for his first points. He's averaging 19.6 points on the season as well as six and a half rebounds. Down by seven are the Indians. They've got a lot of time to go as they will. Nice pass. Bit strong on the shot was Newhouse. And coming up with the loose ball was number two was Montgomery. I'm not for sure I looked down if he got the rebound or if he got the steal. But uh, nonetheless, the fourth point by Montgomery. And now a 6-0 run. So good response by the Indians after getting down by 11. They've scored six straight. Open three for Berger. This one is good. He's two for three from that range. That's the fourth triple of the first quarter made by Bakkins. Two by Dosek, two by Berger. 14 to six. It will stay with Newton. And then for Bakkins, number 23. Noah Top and for Newton number 22 Aaron Colvin in for the Indians Montgomery go to the backcourt with it to Carson Tucker under three minutes to play first quarter Tucker beat Garden by Top who just came into the ballgame 
This is Quinn Peters, number one, averaging 13.3 points a game. He's a junior. Pulls up from 16. That one is good. He now has four in the ball game. Started off 0 for 2 from the field. Now has made his last two. Put him at 2 for 4. Plyman quickly down the court. Good defense by the Indians. They'll kick out for a 3 from Herzog off the mark. Plyman offensive rebound. I'm sorry. Top with an offensive rebound. Top. Three-point shot. No good. Another offensive rebound for the Trojans. Top will fire again. This one is good. Five made three-point baskets in the first quarter. 17-8 the score. Montgomery gets it to Peters. Harold Oburn back up top. It goes to Carson Tucker. Under two minutes to play first quarter. Montgomery finds Oburn. Oburn is yet to score. Taking it on the dribble. Plyman comes up with a steal. And there's a blocking foul called against Hudson Montgomery. His first first foul of the game. 17 to 8 is a score. In for the Trojans. JJ Meyer wears number three. Into the ball game for Bakins. As Plyman will run the point for the Trojans here. The 6'5 senior. 18.9 points a game for him. Seven and a half rebounds plus over three assists a game. This is him with the basketball right now. Spinning against the Indians. His shot was maybe blocked but rebounded by Plyman. So he'll keep the possession. Plyman for three. Good. Six made three-pointers now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four different players have made one. And a good shooting performance from that three-point range so far for Bakins. They lead by 12, under a minute to play. Montgomery, nice move. He can't come up with a made basket, but boy, good move. Splitting the defense, using the glass, just couldn't get it to go down. J.J. Meyer thought about it. He'll give up to Plyman under 40 now. Clock running. J.J. Meyer, 5'5", junior guard. Back to Meyer, under 30 now. Jordan Herzog, 6'4", junior over to Plyman. They play keep away here and look content to settle maybe for the last shot of the quarter. We're at 15. Dosa gives it to Plyman. Kicks out. Top for three. No good. Oberg, Oburn with a defensive rebound. He's had a number of boards already, Harold Oburn. That came in averaging 6.6 rebounds. And there's 6.7 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Tucker, corner, three-point shot is made by number 22. Coleman. Aaron Colvin, a big shot for his team as that ends the first quarter of action. Bakken's leads Newton 20 to 11. You're watching boys varsity basketball on NK Telco Sports. We are here and here and here. Minster Bank is everywhere, providing every banking service that you need to keep your financial life in order. Whether you are on the go or stopping by one of our branches, Minster Bank is here for you. We proudly support the communities where you live. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Unpack your potential with a career at Pratt Industries. Working at Pratt Industries is more than a job. It's a sustainable career. Pratt Industries to me is a job, it's, it's my career. That's the way I put food on my table, but I love what I do. We offer competitive pay, excellent benefits, and opportunities for career advancement. To apply, visit careers.prattindustries.com. Welcome back to Bakken's High School. We're at the Coliseum here at the Bakken's Athletic Complex. 20 points put up by Bakken's in the first quarter. They did so on seven of 14 shooting. They were one of three from two-point shooting and a very impressive six of 11 from three-point shooting. 
for Newton. Indians, five of, ele- five of 11 in the first quarter. Good percentage. Four of nine, two-point shooting, one of two from three-point shooting. But the Trojans, six of 11 from three-point range. Plyman has one. Dosik has two. Berger has two. And Herzog has one three-pointer. Elbow jumper by Montgomery, no good. Herzog with the rebound, and Newton ended the first quarter with a three-point basket. Couldn't, could not add on to it as Botkins will get another look here, and Plyman connects on his second made triple. And the shooting continues to be very good for Botkins. They are efficient. They got the offensive rebound, and Capitalized with a three-point basket. There's a hand violation or a push violation against J.J. Meyer. In for the Trojans, number two and 42. Rylan Paul is number two. And making his first appearance in the ballgame, 6'4", sophomore. Colton Plyman wearing number 42. Indians looking to kind of answer back here, this 12-point deficit. Tough shot from the baseline by Peters, no good. Good job again by the Trojans. They have not allowed an offensive rebound. They do commit the turnover. Their second turnover of the game, that equals what Newton has, which is two. There's a foul on, looks like Herzog will commit the foul. Twelve point lead. That matches the biggest lead of the game when it was 20 to eight. Turnover on the or the Indians. Another three point shot. This time, J.J. Meyer, the fifth different Trojan. Turnover Indians. Herzog off the mark with his try. Offensive rebound and shot by Ryland Paul. It's blocked by Harold Oburn. It'll go out of bounds off of Bikins. So some hot shooting here for the Indians. I'm sorry, for the Trojans. Has the Indians down by 15. 26 to 11. Six minutes to go in the half. For right now, the Indians would like to get number 33, Harold Oburn, on pace here. He's not scored yet. They try to throw it off of Meyer's leg, but instead it stays inbound. So not a lot going right for the Indians. Herzog. His shot is blocked by number 22, Aaron Colvin. Good defensive play by Colvin. The ball, though, will stay with the Trojans underneath their own basket. Coming in for Bakings will be 21 and 1. Berger and Dosek. Carter Plyman finds. Colin Dosek in the corner, no good. That's his first miss of the night from three-point range. Held ball possession, will keep it with Botkins. He'll have another look here. So Dosek misses his first three of the night. He's two for three from that range. That gave him seven, or I'm sorry, came in with 17, so that gives him 19 on the season. Plyman leads the team in three-point shooting with 25 makes. Make that now 26 as he hit one earlier. There's a miss by Paul. And scoring the basket in somewhat transition Peters. is Peters. I believe the assist maybe came from Montgomery or it came from Tucker. I wasn't sure which one, but uh, Peters scored the basket. He now has six. He averages 13 a game for the Indians. And again, still scoreless is Harold Oburn, averaging 19.6 a game. Plyman to his brother Colton for three no good and there's a whistle and a foul 
The Thomas Hall Bobcats, number 21, Brant Berger. That's his first and team's third. Brant Berger picks up the first foul, just a third foul of the half against Bockins and for Newton only one foul and that's against Hudson Montgomery so a clean game if you will defensively not many fouls called Peters from the just off the elbow no good Plyman goes high for the board finds his brother and makes the basket as Colton give the assist to Carter came in just under three and a half assists did Carter. He got one there, gets the bucket to his brother, Colden. And a 15-point lead now, the biggest of the basketball game. Carson Tucker, nice backdoor cut. Nice pass by Oburn and a nice cut there as he hit Peters going to the basket. He has fouled. If I was calling Bacchus, number two, Ryland Paul, that's his first and team's fourth. Ryland Paul commits the Botkins foul, the fourth team foul, the first on Paul. Free throws coming up here for Quinn Peters. 81%, a very good free throw shooter on the season. At the line for Newton, he's number one, Quinn Peters. He's 81%, 34 of 42 from the free throw line. 13.3 points a game, three rebounds, and the chance here to get his eighth point, and he does just that. So he has eight of the Newton 15. Back to a 13-point lead. Halfway through the second quarter as Plyman drove to the basket and shot was blocked, but he was fouled. So Ober in his first foul and a chance for Plyman. Well, maybe it wasn't a shooting foul. It's going to be out of bounds, so maybe they ruled he was in a passing motion. So it will stay with Botkins. Plyman gets it up top to Colin Dosek. They swing it over left side back to Dosek. Man-to-man defense for the Indians. Three-pointer, Dosek, his shot off the mark. Oburn with another rebound. Again, he has not scored yet, but he continues to play, do good things on defense. He's hauled down a number of defensive rebounds already. The Indians run a nice backdoor play. Peters gets the bucket. And I believe the assist was from Aaron Colvin. So now down to 11 as going to the basket was Paul. His shot rejected by Oburn. The Trojans, though, get it. And Plyman, Carter Plyman, goes right back at it and scores on the offensive second chance. Good offensive set there by the Trojans. They got a good drive, good defensive play by Oburn, but uh, Carter Plyman answers with his seventh point of the game, or tenth point of the game. Oburn in the scorebook now with three. His 12th of the season. Doesn't shoot a lot of three-pointers, but makes that one to get himself in the scoring column and now cut the lead to 10. Doesn't take long, and Paul becomes, I believe, the sixth different Trojan. He answers Oburn's three with a three of his own. This attempt by Carson Tucker off the mark. Plyman with the basketball. Nice pass. Shot, though, short by Herzog. Rebounded by the Trojans. Another offensive rebound, but the turnover, the third of the game. We'll give it back to the Indians. Peters answers with a three-point basket and a timeout by Botkins. So that's a precision strip timeout, a full timeout. We'll take one with him. You're watching Boys Varsity Basketball here on NK Telco Sports. Are you looking for a rewarding career? Lincoln Electric Automation in Coldwater and Fort Loramie supplies top-of-the-line automation systems to manufacturers. Lincoln Electric Automation routinely develops its team through hiring and by offering advanced technical training. We understand that every employee matters and every role contributes to the success of our business. We offer advancement opportunities, competitive wages, and benefit packages. Visit LincolnElectric.com and get on track to a better career and a better future. 
New Knoxville Supply Company, the supply source for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. We specialize in plumbing products from many name brands, electrical products from replacing a light switch to rewiring an entire house, heating, air conditioning, and geothermal products, sheet metal ductwork, installations, and service. We are now housing more inventory so all the hardware items you need to complete the job are available right away. New Knoxville Supply. Stop in, call, or check us out online at newknoxvillesupply.com. Welcome back to the Coliseum here at the Bakken's Athletic Complex. My name is Jeff Henschen bringing you tonight's basketball game between Newton and Bakken's. Newton out of the Western Ohio Athletic Conference. Bakken's representing the Shelby County Athletic League. Precision strip timeout called for by Coach Groves of Bakken's, his first timeout. As it's a 10 point game, as the biggest lead was 15, 28 to 13 here in a quarter. Now it's 33-23. Botkins continues to shoot three-point shots very well. Six different players have made at least one. And their percentage is right around 50. I'll tally those up here shortly, but they were 6 of 11 in the first quarter. And 3 for 7 now, so roughly, quickly thinking, I think 9 of 18. So that's a great percentage of 50%. J.J. Meyer adds to his total his second of the game. He has six on the season. He's two here in a quarter. That gives him seven and eight. A number of Trojans feeling the confidence, if you will, from beyond the arc tonight. It has helped them do a 13-point lead, 36-23. Drive to the bucket by Montgomery. His shot was missed, but a good job defensive, or I should say offensive rebounding from number 50, Max Newhouse. Newhouse, the first offensive rebound for the Indians here in the ball game. He makes the free throw. His first point, he averages just over three points a game. He's a sophomore. Herzog for Bakins picks up his second foul. Newhouse can't get the second one to drop. Colin Dosek with the defensive board. Carter Plyman kicks to J.J. Meyer. That one no good. Tipped out and Newton with the defensive board. Going to the basket was Peters. His shot no good. Colton Plyman securing the rebound. A tough break for the Indians. Had a decent look from Peters. Could not get it to go. The lead is 12. Under 30 seconds to play first half. Colin Dosek. Now Carter Plyman. Harold Oberon defending Plyman. Needs to be careful. Oberon does have the one foul. Down to 10. Down to six, Plyman skips over to J.J. Meyer. Top for three, no good. And that is the end of the first half here at Bakken's. Your score after two quarters. Bakken's 36, Newton 24. We'll take a break. And when we come back, we'll have the third quarter here on NK Telco Sparks. Whether you do business from a corner store or a corner office, there is one asset your business cannot do without. The internet. Everything from sales and marketing, training and shipping, PR, HR, and R&D, your business relies on a fast, reliable, and secure connection. And now, it's more important than ever to partner with an internet provider you can trust. Get Flight Fiber for Business, backed by local tech support from NK Telco. Call today. Hi, I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bomb. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. 
We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. At Wilson Health, we're extending care beyond the walls of the hospital with resources designed to keep you in charge of your health. Our independence and connection to the community are unique in a world where big healthcare strives to act like corporations. Our tools may be the same, but we are different. We're neighbors, friends, and family who truly care about the people who live here. We call it caring without limits, and it's just the beginning of a whole new Wilson Health. Welcome back to the Coliseum here at the Bakians Athletic Complex. We're at halftime. The Trojans lead the Indians 36-24. Our first half numbers look like this. Newton shot 6 of 16 from two-point range, 3 of 5 from three-point range. Overall, 9 of 21 for 42% for Newton. For Bakians, very good shooting uh, from three-point range. They were only 3 of 10 from two-point range, but a very good 10 of 22 from three-point range for a total of 13 of 32 for 40% overall. That's a 45% shooting from three-point range. So the, I'm understanding the record is 16. And that was done back in 2019 against New Knoxville. So more importantly, the Trojans want to take care of the business and win the basketball game. As we are ready to start the third quarter. So your scoring leaders for the Newton Indians, 13 points from Quinn Peters. That is right at his season average. This man right here with the basketball and the shot is number 33, Harold Ober, and that's his fifth point. So he had three at half, came in averaging just under 20. Maybe the good for the Indians. They're only down by now 10. But he's uh, not been able to get on track offensively yet. But he now has five. And for Botkins, six different players made three-point baskets in the first half. Here's a chance for another one. That one off the mark by Paul. And a rebound by... Brent Berger picks up his second. Scoring for the Indians, I don't know if I finished in the first half. Quinn Peters with 13, Hudson Montgomery with four, Aaron Colvin with three, Harold Oburn had three, he now has five, and one point for Max Newhouse. Their total of 24, now 26. Newhouse up top of the basketball, gives it off to Quinn Peters, and Peters has had a couple shots from that same spot on the other end in the first half. Mid-range jumper is good. He now has 15. And for Botkins, Carter Plyman right now at the basketball had 10. Six from Colin Dosek. Three from Ryland Paul. Six from J.J. Meyer. Six from Brant Berger. As Plyman goes down, he just goes down. That maybe he had rolled an ankle. That's a turnover. Finishing the scoring for Botkins. With a burger has, or Brant Berger has six. Three from Jordan Herzog and two from Colton Plyman. Their total of 36. And right now it's an eight-point game, so the biggest lead was 15 by Botkins in the second quarter. It's at eight now. Any type of point would have it back to the closest it's been since early on, like maybe 14-6 was a score back in the first quarter. And Newton has really been patient. It's, they've um, taken their time in offense at times, and uh, Quinn Peters has an answer. He makes his 17th point pull-up jump shot, and now it's a six-point lead. So a beautiful start for the Indians. They have now made this very interesting here. A six-point game, a lot of time left. Dosek drops it down to Herzog. Herzog will be fouled. Clay Ehrman with the call against number 50, Max Newhouse. Wasn't quite vertical, lost that 
It wasn't moving, but I think his arms were not straight up. He had them off the 90 degree mark to the floor, if you will. So Herzog battles and gets the foul and earns the free throw. That's the first free throw attempted by the Trojans tonight. It comes in the third quarter. Newton shot three of four in the first half. Very few turnover, or very few free throws, and also very few turnovers as Herzog misses the second, but Plyman runs down the offensive rebound. Colin Dosek, his triple no good. Another offensive board here by Plyman, no good. Plyman, good. So multiple looks there for Botkins, and they come up with points. They now lead by nine. Botkins had eight offensive rebounds in the first half. They had three in that possession, so they're in double figures with offensive rebounds. Pass a little too hot. And I mentioned the turnovers. Newton had five in the first half. That's number six. I have Botkins down as only three in the first half. They had one here to start the quarter, so Botkins now with four turnovers. Newton with six. So very few turnovers in the first half and very few free throws. Plyman over to Herzog. Nine-point Botkins lead. Herzog spins, stutters, goes up. A little bit too strong. Plyman tipped it out, but Newton came up with it. Peters three-pointer no good. Down the court. Turnover, though. The pass intended for Dosek picked off by, I believe it was Montgomery. He'll hand off to number one, Quinn Peters. Peters right now, 17 points, leads all scorers. Harold Oburn goes to the basket and scores. He had three in the first half. He has four here in a quarter. That gives him a seven. And he's only taken five shots, so it's not like he's not been on. He just has not shot much. His fifth shot, he's three of five from the field. Plyman scores that he was guarded and continued to go to the basket. He now has 14 points. Oburn beginning to maybe feel it now. And a timeout called for with 3.43 to play in the third quarter. Coach Spittler will take a 30 seconds. That is a precision strip timeout here on NK Telco as we'll keep it right here with a score of 41 to 34. That's seven point lead. Now if I check my notes here, Trying to keep track of all this. That seven might be, that was six. It was 36-30 a little bit ago. So it's not the closest they've been in a while, but they're at seven now are the Indians as they call timeout, their second charge timeout of the game. The officials once again working the game tonight are Clay Herman. He's by the Newton bench. Steve Trout's down by the Bakins bench. And Mitch Owen is on the left side of your screen getting ready to administer the throw-in by Botkins following the Newton made basket. Six points in a quarter for Harold Ober. Now nine in the game. He's averaging 19.6. So he's beginning to get a little bit of rhythm going, a little bit of confidence. He came in, what I was told, is about 40 points short of scoring 1,000. And likewise, Carter Plyman with the basketball came in with 929 so about 71 short. And those two are seniors. Herzog turns. Good defense by Oburn straight up. Didn't break verticality and forces a tougher shot there by Herzog who comes up empty. Pass intended for Oburn. Bad angle. Turnover. A blocked shot by Oburn on the attempt by Herzog. It stays with Botkins, though, so beautiful defensive play, but Botkins can't finish. Paul misses, and a, give an asterisk to that great defensive play by Oburn, and then Botkins came up short on the attempt to cash in, so break here now, a seven-point lead. A bucket here would cut it to five. I believe Herzog kind of pays back Oburn with a block shot as Oburn had blocked Herzog, and now Herzog blocks Oburn and Botkins will come down here in offense and try to add to their seven point lead. 
Plyman being guarded by Montgomery. Now here comes over and over to double. And there's a foul. Over and picks up his second. Good sportsmanship there by Oburn going over to pick up Carter Plyman. Oburn, although he had a tough start offensively with not many shots, never changed facial expression. You would not know he was frustrated. I mean, he kept calm, played hard. Hasn't changed his demeanor one bit. And Oburn, nine points in the game now. Plyman inbounds it to number one, Colin Dickey, back to Plyman. Colton, his brother, into the game as Carter goes to the basket. No good. Tipped around. Offensive rebound into the hands of Paul. Another offensive rebound. Boy, the Trojans have cashed in, or they've had a lot of offensive rebounds. They had eight in the first half. They have five here in the quarter. They commit their third turnover of the quarter that matches what they had in the first half. Peters, no good on the shot. Here come the Trojans and the defensive rebound. Dosek. Carter Plyman. His shot at the basket. Miss gets his own rebound and misses. So a couple looks there. And the ball's knocked out of bounds. Off of the Indians. I believe it's going to be a hustle play there by number four. I'm sorry, number two. Ryland Paul hustled him down the court, deflected it off of a Newton player. Each team has kind of been stuck here, 41-34. We've been there since, I believe, the timeout at 3.43 to play in a quarter. Nobody has scored since the 3.43 mark. So Newton couldn't get in closer, and Botkins couldn't open it up again. They do now. Herzog, his second of the game. Turnover, Newton. So they will give the basketball back to Bakins with a minute seven to go. So it took a while for either team to score, but the Herzog basket came up big. And then the follow-up turnover gives the Trojans the basketball right back. A chance to add on to their three-point bucket made by Herzog. Under 60 seconds to play. Noah top over to Dylan or Colin Dosek. Plyman wheels, deals, a little strong off the glass, tips again, gets his own rebound. Boy, he's He's done that tipping a lot. Then they will keep the basketball alive and cashes in. Coach Grove takes a 30-second timeout with 41 seconds to play. Precision strip timeout on the court. We'll take one with him. You're watching Boys Varsity Basketball on NK Telco Sports. Carriage Works has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. Carriage Works thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top-of-the-line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. Ohio means jobs all Glaze County has a job for you. Grand Lake Health System has over 800 employees. Included is Joint Township District Memorial Hospital and multiple physician practices. And we're now hiring a variety of positions that fit all education and skill levels. Plus, you'll get a great benefit package offered to both full and part-time workers. Join this rewarding career and help your community in the process. Contact Ohio Means Jobs Auglaize County for all your employment needs. Welcome back to the Coliseum at the Bakken's Athletic Complex. My name is Jeff Henschen. 41 seconds to play, third quarter. It's now back to a 12-point lead in favor of Bakken's. A three-pointer by Herzog and an offensive stick-back bucket by Plyman. Five unanswered have taken that seven-point lead now at 12 as that seven-point lead was there for a couple minutes. From the 3.43 mark down to the minute 15, neither team scored. And 
Hawkins then when they do, they get two possessions, two buckets without Newton even having a chance following the turnover sandwiched in between those two possessions. Under 20 seconds of play and nearly an errant pass down to 15. Again, now they get it into Oberon's hands. I'd keep it with him down to 10. He's being guarded by Herzog down to eight. They hand off to Montgomery. Three seconds, he goes out the basket. Nice assist from Montgomery. Basket by Aaron Colvin, a much needed bucket. That ends the end of the third quarter. It's 46 to 36. We'll take a break, come back with a fourth quarter here on NK Telco Sports. This is the FFA Livestock Judging Team. As uh, listen in on their recent accomplishments, the FFA Judging Team. Last spring, the team placed fourth out of 179 teams in the state FFA Livestock Judging Contest, which qualified them to represent the Ohio FFA Association and Big E Livestock Judging Contest. In September, they traveled to West Springfield, Massachusetts to compete in this national contest. After all the scores were tallied, the team placed first, and team member John Smock placed first individually. Logan Offner Howard placed fourth individually. Jacob Yancher fifth, and Adam Hall eighth. Their advisor is Chad Burney. This is the 12th time Bakken's FFA has earned the right to compete nationally since 2009, and the second time the team from Bakken's has won a national livestock judging competition. Congratulations, guys. Welcome back to the fourth quarter. My name is Jeff Henschen. It's a 10-point Bakkins lead, 46-36. Newton outscores Bakkins in the third quarter, 12-10. The game got down 2-7, but then Bakkins able to grow the lead back to 12, and a bucket at the buzzer by number 22. Colvin cuts it to 10, and that's where we begin the final quarter here at Bakkins. Trojans on the year. 10 and 7 overall, 6 and 4 in Shelby County Athletic League play. J.J. Meyer, good. That's his third make of the game. He has nine points. He's three for four from that range. Unofficially, that's 12 made three point baskets in the ball game. Again, the record is 16 against New Knoxville back in 2019. Oburn misses on that attempt. Meyer with the rebound. And there is a violation as I think stepping on the end line was Ryland uh, Paul. Checking back into the game for the Chargers, number 21, Grant Berger. And for the Indians, number 50, Max Newhouse. So Newton is trailed by, or the Newtons, the Indians of Newton trailed by 13 following that J.J. Meyer three-point basket. He has nine points in the game, came in averaging just under three. And he had made six three-pointers on the season. J.J. Meyer, he has three in the game, so that gives him nine on the season. Pass down to Colvin. Oburn gets it, his three-pointer no good off the back iron. And Meyer has come up with two rebounds here to start the fourth quarter. Plyman's had a... Aggressive third quarter, had a lot of drives to the basket, tipped the ball around, kept possessions alive. He ended up scoring six in the quarter. That gives him 16 in the game. As Bakkins pulled down seven offensive rebounds in that third quarter, really helped them on the offensive end. Plyman, out to Berger. Now Herzog for three. It is good. Jordan Herzog, his third of the game, his 12th of the season, and now it's back up to 16. Baseline shot there by number two, Montgomery, a little bit strong. Climbing with another rebound. Meyer for his fourth of the game, no good. 
Montgomery down to Oburn. Goes to the basket. And he is fouled. A free throw is coming up for the 75% free throw shooter. That's his third and team's second. At the line for the Good chance here for the Indians to score without the clock running. Oburn's 75% free throw shooter on a season. His first attempt tonight. And he is good on the first. He now is in double figures with 10. Halfway to his season average of 19.6. Makes good of both of his free throws. There's a whistle and it looks like a full timeout called for by Coach Newton. Coach Splitter, Coach Spittler will take one. We'll take one with him. Precision strip timeout here on NK Telco Sports. We are here. And here. And here. Minster Bank is everywhere, providing every banking service that you need to keep your financial life in order. Whether you are on the go or stopping by one of our branches, Minster Bank is here for you. We proudly support the communities where you live. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Unpack your potential with a career at Pratt Industries. Working at Pratt Industries is more than a job. It's a sustainable career. Pratt Industries to me is a job. It's, it's my career. It's the way I put food on my table, but I love what I do. We offer competitive pay, excellent benefits, and opportunities for career advancement. To apply, visit careers.prattindustries.com. Welcome back, and I'd like to announce some of our sponsors tonight that help us bring you these ball, these ball games. They include our keys of the game. Sponsor is Keyhole Pizza. Our scoreboard sponsor is First National Bank, Think First. Starting lineup sponsor is Emerson Climate Technologies. Our player of the game award is brought to you by NK Telco. And our timeouts that we're in right now is brought to you by Precision Strip. As it's a 14 point game, as we have five and a half minutes left to play. JJ Meyer with a basketball, man to man defense by the Indians. Plyman will be fouled, a little bit too much arm ball or contact, or a hand foul number 22. Aaron Colvin with a foul. Team foul number three for the Indians. Two for the Trojans. Again, not many fouls have been called tonight. Plyman gets it into Brantberger. Colin Dosek with the basketball now. No one's really guarding him as Oburn now will kind of step up and they'll swing it to the right side to Berger. Made two three-pointers in the first quarter. That pass deflected, knocked away, stolen. Turnover by Kins. Nice jump stop and basket by Carson Tucker. His first points of the game, big basket that brings his team back to within 12, 52 to 40. Nice steal by Tucker and then had to really be creative with Plyman charging down the court and he's able to get the shot off and in. As there's a foul against Oburn as Plyman wins a battle of those two stud ball players going to the rim. Oburn picks up the third foul. These will be Carter Plyman's first free throws of the game. 64% on the season. 70 of 109 attempts coming in. Mentioned as 18.9 points a game, 7.5 rebounds, 3.2 assists. Also has about a dozen blocks on the season. Makes good of one of two. Also has a couple made three-point buckets tonight. That leads a team he came in with 25 makes. Now that's 26 and 27 at a pretty good 36% from that range. 13-point lead. Montgomery rebounds with 4.20 to play in the fourth quarter. Oburn. Muscles his way in, off the glass, no good. He had a good third quarter, 
where he started off the third quarter three for three. He missed his next shot in the third quarter and then has missed all three here in the fourth. So after a good third quarter scoring, does have two free throws, but he's been unable to connect from the field. He does have 11 points. Quinn Peters has 17 to lead the Indians. Herzog back up to Dosek and looks like maybe Botkins might be content here to take some air out of the ball a little bit or take some time off the clock. Plyman though does take the shot, a tough one. Shot on the other end by Tucker, no good. Good defensive play by Bodkins hustling down there, making the shot by Tucker very challenged. Indians commit the foul, team foul number six, so it's common, no free throws yet. The next foul will be free throws. For, I'm sorry, for, uh, for Bodkins, they're a 64% free throw shooting team. See once it, Newton kind of elects to put Bodkins on the line. Plyman assist, basket Noah Top. He's in the scorebooks tonight, his first points of the game. Another assist from Carter Plyman. And back to a 15-point game as Newton trying to be, you know, creative on defense, make stuff happen. Sometimes that will allow for some two-on-ones, and they took a nice job, did the Trojans, of capitalizing on that. As Peters misses the shot, and... Bakins comes away, and they avoid the turnover there as Montgomery almost came up with a steal. Plyman, the old Euro step through layup, puts his team up by now 17. As it was a seven-point game with three. It was a seven-point game with 3.43 to go in the third quarter. Newton scored a bucket, called timeout. As Oburn's three-pointer no good. And since that time, Botkins has turned it up offensively as Plyman scores again. So I have Botkins since that 343 mark. They had 41, they got 59 now, so it's 18. They've outscored Newton 18 to 6. They'll make it 18 to 8 on the two point basket by Oburn and the foul against Botkins. Oburn two for two in the ball game from the line. Those came here earlier in the fourth quarter. In for the Indians, number 11, Aiden Kelly, a senior getting some playing time here with 2.07 left to play. Oburn short on the first one. Won't be able to complete the three point play. And there's a foul against. The Indians, and I'll put Carter Plyman on the free throw line. Carter Plyman, bonus opportunity. One for two is Plyman. Those are just for last possession, I believe. In for the Indians, number 10, Ty Shower, a junior in for the Indians. Plyman with 21 on the night. Misses on that attempt. Good hands by Colin Dosek. Almost getting the turnover from, or out of the hands, I should say, of Harold Oburn, but Oburn able to muscle it away and keep possession. 59 to 42. Colvin, his shot blocked by Plyman. I mentioned he had 11 coming in. He's had a couple tonight. Good timing defense. It does stay, though, with the Indians. Minute 43 to play, a 17-point game. Indians of Newton came in 9 of 9. Right now they're down by 17. Is that 3 by Peters? No good. Oburn battles and held ball possession. It'll stay with Newton. Newton again out of the, uh, the Western Ohio Athletic Conference where they're 5-4 and four in that conference. 9-9 nine and nine overall, but uh, right now on pace to go to 9-10. and ten. 
Harden, or I'm sorry, Montgomery, Hudson Montgomery with it now. Peters spins. Tough shot. Gets his own rebound. And is fouled. So good battle there by Quinn Peters. He's uh, missed his last five shots, but he does battle and will be re- rewarded a couple free throws here. Peters had 13 points in the first half. Four here in the second half. A total of 17. Make that now 18. Came in averaging 13.3 for the junior guard. Second one for Quinn Peters is also good. 19 for him and just over a minute to play here as Bakken spreads the court and I would assume there'll be limited shots taken, if any, here as we approach now the final 60 seconds. And they will foul J.J. Meyer. 15-point game. One-on-one opportunity for Meyer. Only 13 attempts on the season for Meyer. Made 10, so he's a 76% shooter as Newton empties the bench here as their starters... Get a nice hand from the crowd. And number 14, Grant Flora. Number four, Ross Deets. And number five, Brenda Schimple. And Botkins also empties the bench here as J.J. Meyer has a one plus one. Grant Flora into the ball game. Number 14 as Meyer makes the first one. Also number 34, Russell Lenhart. Number four, Ross Dietz. Number five, Parker Snipple. And now number 33, Corey Koenig. Nice ball game for J.J. Meyer. He'll finish with three, six, nine, 11. And that pass off the mark. And for the Indians, I believe we have Number 11, Aiden Kelly. Number 10, Ty Shower. Number 12, Quentin Webb. Number 21, Bryce Tony. And number 23, Mason Broomball. Going to the basket. Shot no good by Snipple. Shower. Broomball skips it across to number 11, Kelly. 20 seconds to play. Shower, left-handed shot off the glass and in his first point of the game for just into the ball game. 61-46, and that might be where our final score will end. That is the buzzer. Your final score, Bakken 61, Newton 46. We will take a short break and I'll come back and I'll have our recap and our player of the game selection here on NK Telco Sports. Are you looking for a rewarding career? Lincoln Electric Automation in Coldwater and Fort Loramie supplies top-of-the-line automation systems to manufacturers. Lincoln Electric Automation routinely develops its team through hiring and by offering advanced technical training. We understand that every employee matters and every role contributes to the success of our business. We offer advancement opportunities, competitive wages, and benefit packages. Visit LincolnElectric.com and get on track to a better career and a better future. New Knoxville Supply Company, the supply source for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. We specialize in plumbing products from many name brands, electrical products from replacing a light switch to rewiring an entire house, heating, air conditioning, and geothermal products, sheet metal ductwork, installations, and service. We are now housing more inventory so all the hardware items you need to complete the job are available right away. New Knoxville Supply. Stop in, call, or check us out online at newknoxvillesupply.com. Welcome back to Botkins High School. As I'm putting together some of the final tabulation numbers here and want to go through the scoring for the Newton Indians. Their loss tonight will drop them to 9-10 and 10 overall. They were led in scoring by Quinn Peters with 19. 13 from Harold Oburn. Five from Aaron Colvin, four from Hudson Montgomery, two apiece from Carson Tucker and Ty Shower, and one from Max Newhouse. 
with their total of 46. For Bakken's Trojans, 19 points from Carter Plyman, 11 off the bench from J.J. Meyer, 7 from Jordan Herzog, 6 from Colin Dosek and also Brant Berger, 3 from Ryland Paul, 2 from Noah Top, 2 from Colton Plyman, their total of 61. Job well done by the Bakken's Trojans. Unofficially have them down as 13 of 28 from three-point range. That's just under 50%. Job well done there. They came in as a team shooting at 34%. The three-point shooting tonight, the high percentage and the volume help or enable them, I should say, to the 15-point win. Um, so congratulations to Bakken's. The win tonight puts them at 11-7 and seven overall. They stay at 6-4 in the Shelby County Athletic League. Newton drops to 9-10 overall, and they also stay at 5-4 in the Western Ohio Athletic Conference. Our NK Telco player of the game, I'm going to go with uh, Carter Plyman. He played a phenomenal game, 19 points, dished out some nice passes. He had uh, 10 points in the first half, 9 in the second half, uh, was active on the, the glass. He was assigned to play defense against Harold Oburn. Did a nice job in the first half, held him to three points. And uh, just was called on to handle the ball. Just really did a lot of things right tonight. And um, also, you know, congratulations then to Carter Plyman, our NK Telco player of the game. That will wrap it up here from Bakins. My name is Jeff Henshin. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast here on NK Telco Sports. Your final score, Bakins 61, Newton 46. Thank you for watching.